All right, welcome back, folks. I'm finally bringing you a review of something that I've been really putting through its paces, and I'm really excited to bring to you guys. It is this, the TS-80 Smart Soldering Iron. Comes in a nice little box like this. This is the uh, the cheaper of the two packages. This one's just the iron and the tip. It's not the, uh, the package with a power brick and all the other stuff. So, real, real minimal packaging. You get the uh, you get the handle, the body, and you also get one tip. Uh, there's a little warning and some instruction cards in there. Really, really nothing of note. Uh, it is important to note that the only tip that comes with this value kit is the the little pencil style tip, the really fine point on it. Um, right here is the one of the biggest features that really appealed to me is the fact that the tips are interchangeable on this uh, three and a half millimeter headphone style jack. Uh, real quick and easy to put together, packs down really light, especially if this is your on the road soldering iron. If you're gonna go to go to an event or go fly someplace and you take a soldering iron with you, this one takes up a lot less space than the older TS-100. Um, and in a lot of ways, uh, this is more versatile than the TS-100, in my opinion. But uh, with that said, we'll go ahead and compare this to the TS-100, which I have right here as well. This is a excellent, excellent soldering iron. This one's the Pro 32 by Sane Smart TS-100. It's all the same, basically. Uh, this one on the market right now, there are a lot of tips available for it. I do prefer the chisel style tip rather than the pointy one. But the downside to this one is if you want to remove the tip, you do have to find yourself a two, uh, sorry, one and a half millimeter Allen key. You got to remove this little screw and then you're able to take the, uh, the tip out of it to swap it for a different one. Whereas, you know, the TS-80, it's just a quick one of these. Now, I know what you're thinking, that's probably not that big of a deal because you may be looking for your first, like, good quality soldering iron, something to use on the bench, something to take with you on the go, and you're looking at the price difference between the TS-100, the TS-80, and, say, you know, a Heiko 888D. Uh... And there's a there's a substantial price difference in between each one of these. Uh, the Heiko is huge. This is a bench only thing. It runs off wall power. Super powerful. A lot of reserve in this thing. You can you can do a lot with this. There's nothing you can't do with this. This is there's no going wrong with a Heiko. But we all know where that stands in the in the grand scheme of things. That is a a bench top soldering iron and we're we're focusing on kind of the portable guys whether these can work as your your daily driver if there was only one soldering iron you could have like would these work for them and the answer is yes absolutely especially for the things we do in the mini quad community this will do everything everything from the tiniest little detailed solder you know doing 28 gauge wire to a flight controller up to soldering some XT60 connectors with 14, 12 to 14 gauge wire on them. These will both do it. This one, right now, I feel will do XT60s a little bit better than this one because it is a higher power output. And the reason why, I've, uh, one of the reasons why I've taken so long to get this review out is because of the fact that I can't find replacement tips for this thing. So I'm not really comparing apples to, uh, apples, to apples here. It's kind of like apples to oranges. Uh, they're still fruit, but they're different. With that chisel tip, there's a lot more meat touching your work than there is with the little pointy guy. So, this one will do XT60 just fine, but I'm very confident that once they start coming out with more tips, like a chisel tip, like this guy here, uh, these two will be on par with each other. Now, I did say that this is a lower power rating than the TS100, which it absolutely is. So, the TS-100 is, is a bit higher power output than the TS-100, but 
in my use, I find that the TS-80 is actually just as good as put, at putting the heat to the work as the TS-100 is. And I have a feeling it has to do with the efficiency of the tip. If you look at the profile of the, of the tips, the heating element is right here, right on the tip, and this thing puts the heat to the work just as well as this does. A couple other things that really make me like the TS-80 over the TS-100 is I hate the profile of this thing. I love how, I love that this is round. You can grab it in any position and it doesn't matter. It feels the same no matter how you're holding it. So every time you pick it up, it doesn't matter. You're not picking it up and then reshuffling to, to find center on it because this is how you naturally want to hold onto this one. And when you're holding onto it, your fingers are right on top of the two programming buttons. And on top of that is if you're using a chisel tip where it's directional. So if my chisel's facing this way, I've got to find a way to get into my work differently than, than is this one where it wouldn't matter what direction this is pointing. It's the same. And I, I've always had issues holding onto it. Like, yeah, it's not hard to hold onto it, but it's just not comfortable and it's not intuitive. Like, it's just not, the ergonomics are just not done well on it. Whereas this one, it's, yeah, it's, brilliant how it works and the uh, the tip to handle length is a bit shorter it's not a ton but when you're grabbing back here because of how it's shaped as opposed to getting right up on the end of it I mean yeah you could do it with this it just doesn't feel right the distance between your fingertips and the work is a lot shorter and then the the big difference for me the one that kills this in my eyes is Here's the power cord that comes with the TS-100. Yeah, I've cut it off and put an XT60 connector on it, but it is this stiff, very difficult to work with. Uh, I, I think it's like a, a it's like a PVC coated power cord that it just it's non-compliant. It does not go where you want it. So, plus, you've got this huge barrel connector sticking out of it. So every time you sit it down. Wherever you had the cord last, it wants to, uh, the cord is stronger than the iron. You know, like the cord, if it's if it's kinked, it'll push the soldering iron up. And this makes it a real hassle to work on. Yes, it's very convenient that you can connect it to an XT60, uh, especially in the mini quad world. But, whereas the TS80, I'll get this guy out of here, I'm done talking about it. I can use this power cord. I can use this one. I can use this one. I can use this one. I have a ton of power cord options for it because it runs off USB-C. That is the biggest feature of this thing in my eyes, USB-C. Now, maybe I am a bit partial because my daily driver is a Samsung Note 8, which, you know, it runs off USB-C. So I have a bunch of USB-C cords laying around. And uh, the, the variety of cords you can get, like this one, super soft silicone rubber. You connect it. Oh, okay. You connect the right end. And it goes wherever you want it to go. It doesn't fight you. It doesn't hold a memory. It just, it's just more compliant. Uh, I can use short cords, long cords. It doesn't matter. Just whatever cord you have will work. And since I've always got a USB-C cord with me, it's super convenient, whereas... Uh, where'd it go? This, this barrel jack deal, this is the only one I got. If I lose this or it gets damaged or I forget to put it in my, my backpack with my soldering iron, I'm hooped. So, we talked about the, the USB-C, the portability of it. I mean, look how, look how small this thing breaks down to. And then, I mean, if you were really crunched on space, you can take this stupid thing off. And look how tiny that is. This is the power hand. I mean, this is this is the guts of it. Um, put that back together. Uh, there are some things to note about the power requirements for this soldering iron. You have to use a QC 3.0 compliant uh, power brick, which, uh, again, Note 8, it has uh, quick charge built into it. Uh, you need 
something like this, you, it needs to be uh, nine volts at two amps. If you try to run this on a standard five volt power brick, it, it doesn't work. I haven't found a way to make it work. It is open source. Maybe someone will come up with the firmware for it that will allow it to work just kind of at a lower, a lower output. But as of right now, you need a QC 3.0 uh, power brick. Uh, and these are really convenient. I just plug them into my power strip and I'm good to go. Also, I've been using this guy here. This is a massive 24,000 milliamp hour power brick that is quick charge 3.0 compliant. Uh, I've burned through three of these just with the soldering iron since I got it, just putting it through its paces. And another thing you might want to look at if you look at other reviewers and their review of the TS-80, look at the tip. Look at what their tip looks like. Does it look like it's brand new? Is there any discoloration oxide, oxidation going on on it? If there isn't, they haven't used it and they haven't reviewed it. They haven't put it through its paces. I have. I have soldered up uh, at this point six mini quads, rebuilt a few other projects around the house. Uh, I haven't touched my Hacko or my TS-100 since I got this about two months ago. And I tell you what, it impresses me every time I use it. And I absolutely love the soldering iron. There is a big price difference between these guys. Uh, the Hako, yeah, it's going to be like $110, $120. Uh, if it's any less than that, you're probably buying a knockoff. So be very careful. Uh, they're expensive for a reason. The, uh, the TS-100, it's at a very attractive price of about $60 right now. Uh, really hard to pass up. And the TS-80 is about $80. Um, but I think in the long run, as far as usability, I think this is the better soldering iron. Um, yeah, if you start weighing the dollars into it, you, really, you can't go wrong with this. This is a great soldering iron. This is just better. And then once they start coming out with more tips for it, I, I'm very confident that I will probably never use this again. Um, this done me good, but uh, as things progress, this is going to be the uh, this is my daily driver from now on, um, and especially on the go, it fits in my little uh, my little toolkit just fine. So let's go ahead and power it up. All right, I got it hooked up to my power brick. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and you'll see it boots up with the logo and you do have a bunch of options in the settings menu for you know your working temperature, your standby temperature, how long of inactivity before it goes to that standby temperature. This does have accelerometer in it just like the TS-100 did. Um, power level, I've looked high and low and I can't really find a a description of what the power level is. Uh, I just cranked up to, to the max, which is 24, and I'm just gonna leave it there. Um, standby temperature. Uh, one thing to note running off a of power brick is if your power brick times out because you're not making a, a heavy draw on it, it'll uh, it'll shut the soldering iron off. Um, voltage, uh, temperature, Fahrenheit, Celsius, right hand, left hand, uh, and then there's your, your current volts and temperature. Let's go ahead and fire this up. Just one click of the button. There it goes. I think I have it set at like 680 degrees Fahrenheit. It is a little bit slower than the TS-100, but the TS-100 was very dependent on what size power source you had powering it. Um, and there it is. It hits its target temperature. You can see here that it's this little graphic here showing it's it's heating there's your uh, power coming into the soldering iron so it's bouncing anywhere from nine to eight to nine volts um, makes real quick work of any soldering job uh, again like i said before i would really prefer a a chisel tip on this but you know i'll take what i can get uh, I'm not going to actually do any soldering with it because it's just soldering. Everything we do is really light, tiny stuff. Um, I have a lot of other videos where I'm I'm building up components to quads. You can go back and take a look at those to watch how it works. I want to look at is my SpeedyB on the go Bluetooth dongle. 
Take a look at that where I solder up some main power leads to it. Um, see how well it handles it. Uh, I, I really don't know how to convey, other than in words, how well this works. Uh, you just got to take my word for it. Um, this is really nice. You will not be disappointed. Um, one other thing that I noticed on mine is, I don't know if from pushing hard on the work or just goofing around with it, I the tip's a little bent. It may just be from all the different power cycles it's gone through, or the, sorry, heat cycles it's gone through, but um, it's got a little bit of angle to the dangle there, but, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't make a difference. It still works just fine. Um, so anyways, I, it, what, what else can I say? It is awesome. I really, really like it. And if you're in the market for soldering iron, I highly recommend you get the TS-80, especially if you're somebody who uses devices that run off USB-C power. If you do, it's even better for you. Uh, so anyways, yeah, TS-100, great soldering iron. Highly recommend it. TS-80, even better. I recommend it even more than the TS-100. Uh, so anyways, that's it for today. Uh, like, subscribe, comment down below. Uh, hit that bell if you want to be notified of any of my new videos I lo uh, upload. Um, I got a couple other really cool things that just showed up in the mail that I can't wait to show you. Um, one of them might be a Run Cam Split Mini 2. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to compare that to the original Split V1 or if I should compare it to the Cadex Turtle. Well, why don't you guys let me know? Put down in the comments which one you want to see it compared to. And uh, I've got some, uh, some other ideas coming up, some Pagoda antenna builds, uh, little things here and there. Anyways, like, subscribe, comment down below. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it will help you uh, make a good decision in the future. If you have any questions about this, or this, or this, please let me know. Uh, I, love, I love interacting with the community. All right, guys. See you next time. Bye.